So we are here at TCT Asia, and I want to give a huge shout out to Big Tree Tech for flying us out here. And there is an absolute insane amount of stuff to look at, and there's no way I could cover it all, but we're going to give it a try. So let's get started. So one of the coolest things that we saw a lot of at the show this year was the sheer proliferation of 3D printed shoes. There were several booths that were just showing off their resins and materials making 3D printed shoes. There was also a booth selling 3D printed shoes at the event and it was quite popular. And as you can see here from some of these examples, you can get pretty crazy when it comes to designs for shoes if you're doing it fully 3D printed. But it wasn't just shoes. There were beds being shown off. Uh, this resin right here was really cool. It was used in a hand, but I guess it's used in like some models where it's really flexible. And this was really cool too. This is a pneumatically controlled uh, gripper that again is fully 3D printed. Now, of course, if you plan on mass producing 3D printed shoes, you're probably going to want to automate the process as much as possible. And here is a cool little robot doing just that. Now, while this event is pretty different than a rep rap fest, there were some community made projects and designs and prints being showed off. They did have a section of the show floor set aside for that. So here's some pretty cool full scale, I guess, size 3D printed robots. There's also this fellow was wandering around the show in some cosplay, uh, very reminiscent of Titanfall, but I'm not quite sure if that's correct. Um, this looks like a Gundam, but I don't think it's a Gundam, but it was still pretty cool nonetheless. And this was pretty sweet. This is a vape powered glowing sword that somebody brought to the uh, the BQ booth to show off and it's all LEDs and whatnot. And this was a pretty cool project to see. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a 3D printing event without big 3D printers. So here is a bunch of them. Not as many as I originally thought I would see, but they did have a presence on the floor. This one was pretty cool because it's all linear motors and it was actually surprisingly quiet as it 3D printed because it's a 3D printer and that's what 3D printers do. But these ones were kind of cool. Uh, it's from a company called Kings. They make large format FDM machines and pellet machines. And uh, yeah, these big machines, they're running Clipper of all things. I mean, if it works, it works. It might as well use it. And what do you do with a giant 3D printer? Well, how about a giant ABS Darth Vader? Yeah, that's pretty cool. And of course, feeding a printer, well, you're gonna need filament for that. And uh, hey, why not set up a filament line on the trade show floor? This is a cute little one here. But if that small one is too small, here is a full size, full length filament production line. Uh, just, just making filament on the trade show floor itself. There was actually two or three of these full-size ones that I saw, and uh, yeah, they were just kind of either throwing the filament out after, or if you were lucky, you could walk by and snag a free spool. But unfortunately, with the travel, uh, my luggage was already full enough. And now we're gonna move on to a section where we're gonna take a look at some 3D printing companies you and I are probably a little bit more familiar with. While this was an industry trade show, there were some companies there that you and I would recognize, and this is the Mellow Booth. And while I didn't film a direct segment on this machine, I did get the chance to talk to a rep about their new Hevort based large format machine. So let's uh, hand it over to me now. All right, so it's 420 by 500 by 600 DIY kit, 32 bit running rep wrap thermal or clipper option, direct drive, water cooling. And this one's, is, will there be um, an enclosed option? Yeah, of course. There you will can, be. You can, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can choose that option. Okay. Yeah. And then we have Oldham couple CNC water cooled motors. We got, this one is an IDEX version, but they also have a non IDEX version over there. Uh, down here we got an H5, so that's the SBC for Clipper. Fly board, got some breakout boards, electronics. These are the steppers for the XY. It looks like 
water cooled steppers yes. too, right? Yeah. yeah. So we have a whole water cooling system. Yeah, everything. So including the, the motor. Yeah. So all the motors are water cooled. The steppers are water cooled. Electronics are water cooled. That's including the hot end. And the hot ends are water cooled too. Yeah. So we have water coming up into the hot end. And then we got three points. So independent Z. So it'll do tramming and whatnot. A couple of those are also water cooled. And then there's one over here. This is the same machine, just this is IDEX. This one is single tool head, right? Okay. So this is the same machine, just single tool head. And fun fact, this hot end is two filament in, one out for increased flow. This one, because it's single tool head, it's 500 by 500 by 600. And then CPAP for cooling. What's this guy? Nah, just for fun? Yeah, just for fun. And then, so, yeah, this is for the for the printer. Yeah, so this is this guy. Same, same, same machine. Do the first and the winter. Do the second one. Oh, this will be the. Will it be sold like this with all the metal? Yeah, yeah, all the metal. Uh, we, oh wow. Uh, we split tape also. And it's coming all metal like this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's. Oh, wow. So was it pogo pins? Special lovely. Okay. Special lovely. Okay. That's a, a VZ bot kit. And lastly, at the Mellow booth here, we are going to be taking a look at this little thing here. I guess it's called the Mini B. Uh, don't know much about it. it. It's a lot of machined aluminum, but it is a Core XZ akin to the switch wire. It's a lot of custom stuff on here, really cool. And it uses these itty bitty four millimeter belts. This, this That was pretty cool to see. And moving on over to Frozen, they have the Arco. It is a flying gantry Core XY. So if you've seen a Voron V2, it's gonna look relatively familiar, but it uses four lead screws for the Z. The XY motion appears very Voron-esque, but upside down, it is Core XY. And it is also a multi-filament machine. So it does have an AMS type unit. Now, Flash Forge had a pretty big presence at the show. If you're familiar with them, they have their Adventurer 5M series, it's pretty popular. And they're showing off a rack of their Flash Forge Adventure 85X machines. Now these are multi color machines and they're showing them off here in sort of a print farm configuration now chidi did have their plus four machine on the floor as well but the new thing they had was their filament machine their multi-filament add-on very popular right now multi-filament add-ons very popular right now uh now this machine this unit is sort of still in dev so the buffer unit you're seeing is not a final version obviously we can't have it sticking out like that that would take up too much room and this is something I just wanted to throw in. This is the, I think it's pronounced Myland, uh, M200. I started off with the Monoprice Select Mini in 3D printing, and this is their current version of it. And now we're gonna swing on over to the Fadus booth, and they were also sharing some space with LDO. So we have some V0s here along with some LDO products. Now Fadus is pretty well known for their hot end add-ons. So they do have some accessories and hot ends and nozzles here being shown off. And over here we have some LDO Positron kits as well. Now, TCT Asia was split into two large rooms. The first room was mostly FDM and resin, but the second room, it was mostly SLS and metal printing. And this was a big showing. Now, they did have some SLS machines on the floor, but also just a lot of demo examples of what can be done with the current state of SLS and metal printing. So a lot of rocketry, a lot of space related stuff. I, I do know the Chinese space program is doing a lot of leaps and bounds right now when it comes to development. So there, there was a lot of that being shown off on the showroom floor.
But it wasn't all spaceships and rockets. Uh, this was a 3D printed aluminum electric bike frame. It is amazing what you can do now with current SLS machines and the, what the current state of metal 3D printing can produce. It, it's As somebody who saw early versions of metal 3D printing in 2015, 2016, back when I worked in the tool shop, it's insane what they can do now with this technology. So I hope you enjoyed this recap of TCT Asia 2025. Again, I want to give a huge shout out to BQ Big Tree Tech for flying me and some members of the Voron team out to take part in this event. It was amazing. And we do have one more segment to get to before we wrap it up, but I do want to remind you this week coming up, I'll actually be attending Rapid TCT in Detroit. So if you didn't see some stuff covered at this event, you're probably going to see it covered in the next video. So let's move on to our final segment now, where we are going to plug some breakthrough unique materials. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like that smash button, ring the bell, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any cool stuff like this in the future. I'm Taylor the Canuck Creator, and cheers. <laughs>